Now you're a really busy doctor. Yeah. How do you manage to keep on meditating each day? You know, biggest, it's a hard thing yeah. to fit into a busy lifetime, right? Biggest challenge of the day. Biggest challenge of the day is to try to figure out when you're going to actually get to it. So it sounds like meditation has really helped you to get your life back. Absolutely. Unquestionably, I'm not sure where I would be now if I hadn't started the meditation. Tony's story sounded remarkable, but scientifically, you can't make any general conclusions from just one person's experience. And it's also hard to know exactly what's making the difference for Tony. Is he just going through a good patch? Or is his drug treatment starting to work? Or is it Dr. Benson's course? And if so, what part is meditation playing? Dr. Benson treats his patients with everything he can, you know, diet, exercise, as well as the relaxation response. But it means it's going to make it really hard for me to unpick it all and find out the real effect of just the meditation. One of the ways doctors try to find out whether meditation techniques have any health benefits is to carry out trials. And you can look up the papers on the internet. There are a number about Dr. Benson and his relaxation response. But what happens when you look at just meditation? I'm just going to check on an online database that's got just about every scientific, every peer-reviewed scientific paper on to see what it has to say about Tony's illness and meditation. I get nothing. OK, so there's nothing in here about Tony's illness. But it's not so surprising, it's quite a rare condition. So, what about other health conditions? Let's try asthma. And meditation. Okay, 13 papers for asthma and meditation. Let's see, what else? What about chronic pain and meditation? 33 papers. That's quite a few. Now, at first I thought, great, there's loads of publications, more than I'd imagined. But when I look at it more closely, I can see they've looked at loads of different kinds of meditation. People have done it in different ways. They've mixed it with other kinds of therapies. And they've been looking at loads of different illnesses. There are so many different factors involved, so many different things that are varying. It's going to be hard to draw any kind of conclusions. Now, that's the thing with science. You just want one or two variables, and then it's really straightforward. You can't do that with meditation. But one thing did catch my eye. There are lots of papers looking at the effects of meditation on heart disease, carried out by one particular group. I'm heading to the Maharishi Vedic city in Iowa, home to a community devoted to one particular type of meditation, Transcendental Meditation, or TM. They claim that practicing TM daily can have an impact on almost everything, from blood pressure to world peace. I'm just about to arrive at the Maharishi Vedic city. It just seems totally weird that something like this would be in the middle of America. And I mean the middle of America. Is this it? I think this is. Something that makes me feel skeptical about seeing this group is the way they often explain how TM works. They commonly say its effects are down to quantum physics and something called the unified field theory. But the unified field theory hasn't even been established yet. 
So, as a physicist, I find it troubling. But I decided to put my skepticism to one side, because the health research they've carried out, at first glance, does look rather interesting. Hi. Are you Cathy? I am Cathy, yes. Have I actually arrived in yes. the Vedic city? Yes, we are in Vedic city. Uh -huh. um, so, this is the registration card. Okay. I'll just need to have you sign below. I'd arranged to meet their press officer, Stephen Yellen, who'd offered to show me around the city. So, Kathy, I'm going to give you a little tour of Martian Vedic City. You ready? I'm ready. So, we're coming up to a, um, a bunch of houses which were built according to this ancient system of architecture called Vedic architecture. According to this system of architecture, if you build a home according to certain principles of natural law, you'll have better health, more prosperity, better family relations. You see here the homes here, uh, better success. How many people live here? There's about 500 people that live in Martian Vedic City. And they come from all over the United States because it's such a unique community they can't find it anywhere but here. Stephen put me in touch with a family who'd moved here 28 years ago. Hi, Hi I'm Kathy. Nice to, nice see to meet you. you. Come on in. Wow, so is this a fairly typical Vedic home? Uh, I think they're all very different. Uh -huh. they're, they're very different. There are certain guidelines that they build it by, you know, certain proportions and uh, yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you the mathematical proportions, but, <laughs> but they really work. They're wonderful to live in. Do you meditate? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, 35 years for me? How long has it been for you? 35. 35, yeah. And, and what difference do you think it makes to you? I, I can't imagine not doing it, to be honest with you. Oh. Uh, it's just, we have six children, so raising a huge family. Uh, every morning I start the day with meditation and I'm rested, I'm happy, I'm pretty balanced most of the time. <laughs> and then when you start to get fatigued at the end of the day, you meditate again. And so the evening is good quality, you know. Oh, hi guys, I'm Kathy. Yes. Hi. Isa. Nice to meet you, Isa. Sam. Hi, hi, Sam. So you both meditate as well? Yes. Yeah. What does it do for you? Um, I think it's like a better working environment in school when everybody meditates. They're just more well-rounded and ready for school and academics. When we get up in the morning and we go to school and meditate every day, twice a day, before academics and then after. So it just gets us ready for the day. So your whole school meditates yeah. 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 together? Yeah. How does that feel? We're just regular kids learning the exact same things, just we practice meditation. It gets pretty, you know, annoying sometimes and mom's like, have you meditated today? It's just, <laughs> but I mean, in the end it just really helps. I mean, it's just like, it, it makes me just, you know, so relaxed and like happy. It's clear that the people who live here are very committed to this way of life. But so far, everything I'd seen was about lifestyle, rather than science. And what was slightly unsettling for me is that you can only find out how to practice TM if you go on a course, and that can cost $2,500. Although sometimes they help if you can't afford to pay. Everybody looks kind of shiny-eyed and terribly nice and everybody everywhere is talking about TM everybody says it's changed their life and people do look remarkably content exactly what it is I have no idea and you know all well, the other forms of meditation you can go to a book go to a website buy a CD speak to a monk if you're lucky the secrecy of it is is a bit funny Though I still didn't really understand how you actually practice TM, Stephen had arranged for me to see an advanced form. It's called yogic flying. Apparently, if you get good enough at it, you actually float above the ground. Though, no one's done that recently. You're going to see hopping. You're not going to see levitation. 
the experience inside the person is that there's this tremendous feeling of happiness and bliss and energy that's being generated from within. And a spontaneous result of that is that the body starts moving forward.